In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The official said to the king, this man ought to be put to death because he is discouraging the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such words to them. For this man is not seeking the welfare of this people, but their harm. King Zedekiah said, here he is. He is in your hands for the king is powerless against you. So they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Malchiah, the king's son, which was in the court of the guard, letting Jeremiah down by ropes. And there was no water in the cistern, but only mud, and Jeremiah sank in the mud. Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, an officer in the king's house, left the king's house and spoke to the king. My lord king, 
These men have acted wickedly in all they did to the prophet Jeremiah by throwing him into the cistern to die there of hunger, for there is no bread left in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian, take three men with you from here and pull the prophet Jeremiah up from the cistern before he dies. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Jesus, who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, 
I have come to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will all be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week I spoke of Abraham and said he's one of the saints of the Old Testament with which I deeply connect. Today we see another one, Jeremiah. Now, I promise not everybody in the Old Testament is somebody to whom I, or with whom I deeply connect, but these two really are. I often speak about Isaiah, and I guess I know more about Isaiah. For 30 years, I taught about him in university and have a deep respect for Isaiah. But Jeremiah, I know more about from the heart than from the head. Jeremiah is really the reluctant prophet, one who didn't want the job in the first place, but was called by God, tried to get out of it, and ended up doing the best he could and figuring it wasn't very good and dying a total failure, at least in his own mind. The time was in the years leading up to the 5th, 6th century BC. In the year 598 BC, the armies of Babylon came in and rather quickly attacked the city of Jerusalem. They carried off the king and about 10,000 of the uh, more educated and more skilled portion of the population, more or less just of the city of Jerusalem. But somebody they did not carry off was the prophet, Jeremiah. They knew of him. Actually, they kind of liked him because Jeremiah had been trying to warn the people that if they did not turn back in faithfulness to God, a great disaster was going to come. And so they basically saw Jeremiah as kind of, hey, he's pro-Babylonia. He's warning the people about us. And so they left him there. And for the next 12 years, until they returned and destroyed the city, Jeremiah continued to try to warn the people, not only of the city of Jerusalem, those who were left, but through messengers, emissaries, kind of secret messengers, tried to warn the community of Judeans who had been captured and already taken to Babylonia. And it's because of that that we have this episode today. The officials saying to the king, this man should be put to death. He's discouraging the soldiers who are left in this city and the people by speaking such words to him. So they found him uh, to be almost an enemy of the state. And King Zedekiah, who was a very weak king, he had been placed on the throne as kind of a puppet king 12 years earlier by the Babylonians, although he was from the royal family. They didn't take the strongest person they could put there, but the weakest. He said, I'm powerless against you. Do whatever you have to do with him. And so they take and they throw him into a cistern in the city of Jerusalem, lowering him down by ropes into the mud. No way to get out. He wouldn't drown there because the cistern was dry. It was a time of drought. 
However, he would starve there. And who was it who decided to fight for him? It was an officer of the king's house, Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian. It was a foreigner who decided to intervene on behalf of one whom at least he and certainly others recognized as a prophet of God. My Lord King, these men have acted wickedly in all that they did to the prophet Jeremiah. And note that he calls him the prophet. The other is simply this man, but the prophet Jeremiah, by throwing him into the cistern to die of hunger, for there's no bread left in the city. Others were going hungry as well. And then, a switcheroo, the king commanded Abed-Melech, the Ethiopian, take three men with you from here and pull him up before he dies. And the passage stops there, but if you keep on reading, he says, but don't tell anyone what you've done or who authorized you to do it. They obviously saved the prophet. And it wasn't long after that that the armies of Babylon came back. And Jeremiah, not wanting to leave his people, wanting to go into exile with them against his will, was carried off by some of his supporters to Egypt. We don't know where he died or when he died. And it would seem that at least in his own mind, he was a great failure. God called him, obviously made a mistake, and nobody listened to him. And yet, today, some 2,600 or so years later, he is universally recognized as one of the greatest prophets that God called, a reluctant prophet nonetheless, but one of the greatest, one who remained faithful, not just in great success, but in great failure, and never abandoned the call that God had given to him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, that God will strengthen him as he brings the ministry of St. Peter to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Christian and all the bishops of Canada who continue the work of reconciliation and healing with Aboriginal Canadians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a lessening of aggression on the part of some nations that threaten the peace and survival of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families facing so much pressure from rising prices for food and housing and growing intrusion into family life, 
by conflicting values imposed by popular culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our relatives and friends of Acadian heritage, as they celebrate their patronal feast of the Assumption of Mary, Star of the Sea, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are ill, at home or in hospital, and for anyone facing long waiting times for diagnosis and treatment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Harold Fulton, Kevin Smith, Mildred Coyle, Gino Rago, Adrian Coleman, Pat Lunny McIntyre, Arlene Powell, and for families in mourning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. We bring all of our needs and our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them and to answer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And please be seated while our offertory is gathered. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come up again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Virginia Mabalot, Sister Eileen Dever, Marie Christiane Patel, Ted Reinders, Timmy Sullivan, Leonard Arsenault, 
Frank Flager Jr., Nancy Eatman, and for all the deceased members of the Cacheres, Rios, Alonzo, and Santa Cruz families, grant that all of those who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mar Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share some sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. This week, two men of our diocese received a call from Bishop Christian to be ordained deacons. One of them is Stephen, the other is David Rio, who actually lived in our rectory for the best part of the first year and a half of COVID and is now living at the cathedral rectory with Father McNeil. The two of them will be ordained deacons as part of their movement towards the priesthood on Thursday, the 8th of September at 6.30 p.m. So I'd like to uh, congratulate you, Stephen, on that call, along with David. And uh, <laughs> we will be reminding you of the time uh, over the next few weeks in the bulletin. And anyone is welcome to that ordination at the cathedral in just, I guess, about four weeks' time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace.